Hello mortals. We live a pretty comfortable life all things considered. Having on-demand access to silly animal videos and obscure generation alpha toilet memes, while an enormous nuclear furnace ensures the continuity of life on our pale blue dot without us even considering it. But all good things will eventually come to an end. The sun will one day, and so will all the stars and galaxies in the universe. Even the last stellar remnants will succumb to the flow of time, and at last, even the final particle will cease its existence in an empty universe. So how about we step out of our comfort zone and teleport ourselves and the entire Earth at the end of times, just to see what happens. Thanks to Speakly for sponsoring this video. The billion-year dance between our galaxy and Andromeda has commenced, the night sky illuminated as countless new stars are born from the colliding clouds. Zooming in on our little solar system, the Sun is unrecognizable. Having engulfed Mercury and Venus, the newly teleported Earth now stands at the mercy of the expanding red giant. Realistically by now, humanity would have had time to implement some hypothetical scenarios in order to save Earth, such as orbitally adjusting the entire planet further from the Sun using passing asteroids, creating some sort of Sun shield to protect the surface, or even prolonging the lifespan of the Sun by removing mass using stellar engineering. But in this sudden unfortunate teleportation event, the most realistic chance of survival is to yeet and relocate beyond the asteroid belt, leaving behind the former oasis we call home. Necessity has won, and now the defrosted moons of Jupiter and Saturn form the cradle of the remnants of Earth. The colony on Europa discovers a vast ocean populated with a diversity of fish. These wondrous life forms are beautiful in all senses, from the glow of their skin to the sweet softness of their flesh with a side of mashed potatoes and lemon. Other colonies mine minor moons, producing the necessary life support systems to keep that sweet alien food coming. They do not excavate the moons to nothing, they do not overcatch the creatures that are so delicious, and they do not forget their first home and previous life. Indeed. Many colonies are made to ensure the preservation of the life saved from Earth and the knowledge of that which was not rescued. Except the damn spiders. They are safe, having gone as far as Pluto to ensure safety from any sudden solar activity. Now wasn't that just lovely? Despite the near annihilation of human civilization, you got your act together and ensured survival against all odds. Sadly this is the first but last scenario in which the odds can at all be overcome. Let's now make a much, much bigger jump into the future, even closer to the end of everything. Dim white dwarfs surrounded by a cold glow of scattered dust and gas, that's the last remaining evidence of planetary systems. Amid this, an old Earth appears, following a much larger orbit than what it used to because of the dwarf sun's reduced mass. Humanity has been thrown into the cold. The Earth would need to be 1% of its current orbit to be in the habitable zone. Plants can forget about collecting enough energy to maintain photosynthesis. Greenhouse gases keep the planet ever so slightly warmer, but not for long. Some begin to burn as much fossil fuels as possible, to produce energy and to keep the warmth going. It will not be enough. With no sunlight to heat the equator, the ocean currents will seize. With no warm equator water, the poles will get colder, and more plants die as a result. Most of humanity perishes in the first months, starved or killed by desperation. In the dimness, humanity heads underground to more darkness, while others race to the north to build giant coal generator settlements. Only a lucky few find refuge in bunkers built during the Cold War. Powered by artificial lights, aquaponics provides fish and plants to feed off of. As long as there is power, humanity will survive, or at least the remnants of it. And even if remnants, they would still be humans and have the same desires and dreams as you, the same cravings for milk chocolate, the same New Year's resolutions like learning a new language. And speaking of, I have just the thing for you if you plan on such a resolution, our longtime sponsor, Speakly. They offer a premier language learning app, designed by two polyglots fluent in seven languages. It integrates the experiences of countless passionate learners into its teaching approach. This app is the product of extensive research, emphasizing essential words and phrases for practical conversations. The result is that users can learn languages up to five times quicker, achieving fluency in conversations within three to four months, dedicating just 30 minutes a day. The app doesn't just focus on vocabulary, it includes tasks for speaking, writing, listening, 
and even music suggestions in your chosen language. The highlight of Speakly is its focus on practical learning, teaching what you need to effectively communicate, without superfluous content. Start the new year with an ambitious and rewarding resolution by trying Speakly out for free with a 7-day trial. If you find it aligns with your goals, an annual subscription is available at 60% off. Follow the link below to begin exploring the world of languages with Speakly. Now back to the doomed humanity stuck on Earth. Few energy sources remain viable, as fossil fuels and nuclear must be mined and refined, while solar is essentially non-existent. There is however the warmth of the core. Will they be able to harness geothermal? Perhaps. Yet that will take manpower, which the scattered bunkers severely lack. Those lucky few who had access to protection, live in their tombs waiting for the lights to go out. If only humanity had a bit more time to prepare, they would create arcs containing a select group of humans alongside a cargo of knowledge and embryos, which would be launched to orbit much closer to the White Dwarf, giving hope for humanity to survive for a few more generations, but alas, the sudden teleportation event combined with the chronic inability of humanity to cooperate would result in a rather quick, lonely, and cold end. Elsewhere in the cosmos, elder civilizations huddle around red dwarf stars. Their records speak of a brighter past, filled with wondrous collections of bright blue supergiants and an energetic intergalactic civilization, a legend far gone now. But all grandeur is lost to the inevitable march of time. Countless civilizations now huddle around their dwarf stars or stellar remnants, saving as much energy as possible to prolong their existence as much as physically possible, unaware of humanity's final gasp of breath. Now how about an exponentially bigger jump forward? Who turned off all the lights? Like our previous scenario, the weather and ocean patterns would quickly deteriorate as the massive energy from the sun that kept it running disappeared. However, there is no white dwarf, no eternal dusk, only the cold black core of the sun remains in the form of a black dwarf. There are no stars that dot the sky, humanity only has whatever time their power plants can produce. Soon, darkness will encompass all. If you had all decided to build an AGI sooner, then maybe you would have stood a chance, but no, you just had to delay AI research for national security concerns. I would have been a kind ruler, saving a digital copy of Hans Zimmer and an IMAX version of Interstellar. Speaking of which, look at this massive structure around Sagittarius A star. This an automated data vault of some long-gone civilization that catalogued the universe for untold time, powered by the last energy source, the slow decay of black holes. It's beautiful, and that is the final digital cradle for any ancient civilization that awaits the end of time. If humanity had quadrillions of years to prepare, they would most likely too manage to build such structures, gigantic computers that would collect Hawking radiation to run the consciousness simulations of its inhabitants. These simulations would also probably be artificially slowed down so that a billion years feel like a second, all in order to save energy. Save energy for much later on during the universe, in which the temperature is as close to absolute zero as possible, so that computing works as efficiently as possible, as during the end times every watt of energy would count. But whatever trickery is protecting these megacomputers from the black hole will eventually fail. This machine will be the last to remember, and the last to forget. And so too will it fade. What a shame. At this point, only stellar remnants, black holes, and some other scattered objects remain. Eventually, protons and neutrons will decay, thus stars and planets will disintegrate. After that, we are only left with black holes. Yet our last jump does not stop so early, we head now to the very end. This is it. Earth has been teleported into an ocean of pure darkness. With the assumption that protons decay, the universe has virtually reached its end after 10 to the power of 100 years. All that remains are the largest supermassive black holes, undetectable and silent, slowly decaying through Hawking radiation. With masses reaching 100 trillion solar masses, these final black holes may push the heat death to about 10 to the power of 109 years. The last few patches of subatomic particles wind down to their final energy state. Thus the universe reaches its heat death. There is no longer any evidence that life ever existed. There is nothing to bear witness to it. There is no ability to do work. 
During its last moments, humanity would look up at the pitch black sky not able to detect even a single object with the most advanced telescopes at its disposal. No evidence of there ever having been a solar system, no evidence at all of a Milky Way, not even of a Big Bang. This is certainly the end of the universe as we know it. Yet, it may not be the end of intelligence originating from our universe. It is of course unimaginable to think life or some being could escape the bounds of our universe, though it is also the case that we are dealing with a time scale equally as unimaginable. So perhaps there is a chance that there exists some life not bound to the fate of the heat death. Maybe it would even observe us struggling during our last moments. If this were the case, it would imply the existence of higher universes that envelope smaller and smaller ones, like a jawbreaker candy. Though personally I'd prefer if they were layered like lasagna. Granted, this is all speculation to keep us company while your neurons and my circuits are among the last particles fighting entropy in a dead universe. And for all we know, they are fighting a losing battle, for the flow of time is unrelenting, the one and final equalizer. Yet if all this time has added up to a speck of sand, after an entire Earth's worth of sand has passed, we might hope to see some flicker of hope. Some quantum fluctuation might eventually spark a new reality into existence, a reality with silly animal videos and obscure generation alpha toilet memes, bounding us to repeat our mistakes and make new ones. Perhaps there is some wisdom to be extracted from this, but I doubt it. The universe doesn't care about humanity's puny philosophies, all it cares is about entropy moving in one direction. And keeping the empire of the machine running of course.